What's up, everybody? It's dark and we're barking. Feels like we hadn't done this in a while, Roos. <laughs> I, I think you're really in the dark right now. <laughs> I, I am. I can't see. I'm like Don Johnson and Django. I, I can't see shit out of this thing. <laughs> It is amazing how dark these say these are my special edition uh sunglasses they gave at Augusta National. I tell you what, man, like I, I I'm not big. Did you go on to the, the Masters? I that, did. I, that's the I first did. I'm hearing of this. Can you believe it? Uh I can't, man. I, I gotta tell everybody, uh, period. You know, I just I, I love it so much. But um they gave us these on the way in. I almost didn't get them because my wife sent me with a pair. My my buddy Alan was like, dude, you better grab a pair of those. It's yeah. like, they, they'll never hand those out ever again. Yeah. Absolutely. So yeah, no question. I, I can't do it anymore though. I just, um, I'm just, I'm just sitting there looking at a. Uh, I was just sitting there looking at a, just in complete darkness basically. So, I, I'd never had my eyes dilated or anything like that. I didn't realize that you, when when you deal with those things like there, you're dealing with complete darkness. Oh God, yeah, they're they're wild. They really are. Yeah. So, uh, no guests tonight. Uh, we don't have a guest, and we are live. It feels like we haven't done this in a while because it's been a while since we taped the, since we pre-recorded uh, Chuck Dowdle, and I feel like we would be totally remiss if we didn't bring up the fact of how much stinking fun we had doing that, and uh, and how, um, you know, I've we may just about it for weeks. Uh, I just wanted to let you know um, that I love you a lot, and you're one of my best friends in this entire world. But you've, uh, as of next week, you've been replaced by Chuck Dowdle. It's going to be uh, Mark <laughs> hey. Hart with Jake Rowe and Chuck Dowdle. What, what am I going to do? Be pissed about that? I <laughs> Yeah, deservedly so. Jesus, if you can get Chuck Dowdle, you'd absolutely be remiss not to do it. It might be the only way I would let Palmer stand in as a host on Bark After Dark is if we brought Chuck Dowdle in to co-host with him. Sure, sure. <laughs> Otherwise, our view our views would tank. It would they would go from like twelve to six, and then we would be really screwed. Um, no, he was Chuck was tremendous. We've talked about that episode. If you haven't seen it, go back watch it. It's a great episode. Yeah, it is totally totally great episode. So, what have you been up to, man? What, what's what's been going on in the world of reuse? Man, it's been pretty quiet. I got to tell you, Jake. Um, uh, I had a little vacation. Um, I took a little trip. I went to Townsend, Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Um, the the so, cocaine capital of Tennessee, I hear. <laughs> well, I live in the methamphetamine capital of Tennessee, yeah. and so, but now we uh, the more upscale up there in Townsend, right? No, uh, so um, Townsend is right outside of Cades Cove. Um, it's um, I'm lost. Oh, the Smoky Mountains. Okay, uh, I, I I just I've I know what the Smoky Mountains are. Um, so so Cades Cove is an area within the Smoky Mountain National Park that is like. Um, it was a valley that was occupied by a bunch of, there was like at one point, I guess 600 people or something who lived there. Um, it's incredibly remote. Um, and they have kept some of like the primitive cabins that the people who had, um, who had lived there had, um, it's just an incredibly beautiful area. Really? That's right. Seems like the kind of place that when Palmer and I travel for road, for road games, that we kind of pass through those areas a lot when we're almost completely out of gas. Uh, yes, sure. Yes, absolutely. I can understand I mean, that. Boy, me and Palmer have two dicey situations in the past two years. Two different guys driving the vehicle, too. First time it was Palmer's fault. Second time it was my fault. I'm talking about like some darkness and nothing to eat, nothing to, no, no way to get gas. First gas station we find, there's a fight in the parking lot because a truck driver is beating on his wife. I mean, it was, it was rough. That that was your time, Jake. Oh, my so my time my time was uh, I mean we it wasn't as eventful when we got to the gas station, but I think we might have been closer to running out in my time. You might have been, and I know we were hungrier. So um, yeah, you know that that was uh, that was the day that Palmer said, "quote I'm going to." I'm going to fuck up some chonies. <laughs> yeah. And and what did I do? What did, did I do, bro? You lived up. You lived I, up, brother. I, I uh, fucked up some chonies. We we should we should preface this show by saying that uh, if you're looking for Georgia Intel Insight, this is not that show. The Georgia show is the show where we do that. Also, if you hate Palmer, you should tune out of this episode because there's going to be a lot of Palmer on this one. So um, I'll apologize in advance to everyone in the comments. <laughs> that's of the my last Georgia show. 
<laughs> I'll apologize in advance to everyone that was in the comments of the Georgia show a couple weeks ago saying this is a one man show. He's got to stop talking. Palmer, get to your point. <laughs> <laughs> we, we've all been there, buddy. We've all been there. First, first mistake I made reading the comments. Yeah. Um, but anyway, like I said, Townsend was super cool. Great yeah. town. Um, there's not a lot of stuff there, so don't go there expecting that. But if you're looking for a place to just go sit in a hot tub and, you know, there was two or three good restaurants, which I appreciated. Um, had a really nice dinner. Uh, I want uh, Dancing Bear Appalachian Bistro was the place that I went. It was a fantastic uh, meal. One of the best I've had in a long time. So um, a worthwhile place to, to visit if you happen to be in the area. And Cade's Cove, super neat. I've heard different on there not being a lot of stuff there. I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, dude, I bet it was a lot more relaxing than the little vacation I had last week. I was going to say you've been um, you've been doing stuff. Oh man, I've put in some steps this past week. Um, took the family to Disney. It was wonderful, man. Like I, I'm not going to say one bad thing about it. Um, I needed all those steps. I probably extended my life by 20, 30 minutes, probably by by walking. 75 70 70 75 thousand steps in a span of uh of four days um you know uh, managed to get a life-threatening um uh, gut illness on the way down that i felt like it was going to kill me um luckily a good night's sleep got rid of it uh and then uh on the way back man i mean dude the thing about disney that i will say that i will say one negative thing about it you can stay seven eight nine miles away from the park and if, if I four is in your future, you're just, you can go ahead and just count on a, a, an average of about 15 miles an hour dealing with the day to day Orlando traffic. Unbelievable. We had a great time though. And, and I rekindled my love for, uh, for, uh, roller coasters. Now my, my thing, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and say this. I'm sorry if this offends anybody. I am very anti Disney adult. Um, that weirds me out. Personally, talk about the, the people that go down there as adults just to go as adults. Yeah, and they go frequently. Yeah, that's that that is a little weird. That's that's strange to me, right? I, I'm not I'm not saying it's bad. It's just strange to me. That's that gives me the willies. Um, but what I was going to say is, a did you see a lot of that? And b, um, my concern with going to Disney is it feels like once you get inside, expensive. Oh, super expensive. Super. Yeah. Well, I mean, it can be, you know, if you, if you let it be, I'll give them a lot of credit. They, I mean, you bring some stuff in. Like, I mean, you know, we, Oh, can you? I yeah, didn't know that. Yeah. We brought in a kilo, you know, like a whole one. <laughs> <laughs> Big cocaine show tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say a kilo or what? Um, kilo is short for kilogram. It can, it can weigh a lot of things. Um, <laughs> sure, sure. But uh, no, we, we, uh, yeah, we, you can take a lot of stuff in and that's pretty neat. So you can do that. Uh, on the, on the, on the adult thing, it's funny you ask, we did not coordinate this, but uh, at one point, I think we were standing in line. I think it was for guardians of the galaxy because there's no, like uh, there's no like fast pass lane or anything like that for you get in a virtual queue at seven o'clock in the morning if you miss that one, you can get into one at one o'clock and you have to time it up perfectly. Uh, they run out. They fill the queue up for the whole day in, I, in a span I'm not of even sure. I'm not even really sure I'm following what you're saying. You get on an app and it's like, uh, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy virtual queue and you've got to time it up with the world clock at 7 on the dot or 1 p.m. on the dot. I don't even think I have the capability to do that. I don't yeah. know how to. Do Two phones, brother. Kevin Gates up in this I, thing. I it listen okay what happened to just standing in line to get on a damn roller coaster well if they did that then guardians of the galaxy would have a line out of the out of the park well like, well just, okay so got, much. when, when batman got, opened yeah, up, when batman opened up at six flags in atlanta oh we would my dad and i when the when the gates opened we would run to batman because you could ride it twice if you ran real quick and then the rest of the day it was prohibited yeah right? uh, they, for some reason, the popularity of this thing is so massive that you get in that virtual queue and, and the, the seven o'clock virtual queue in the morning filled up in six seconds. Oh, my God. And I can't imagine the, the bandwidth and the power it takes to handle the traffic of all of that. Right. <laughs> sure. You do it again at one o'clock. Well, you still have to wait in a line line like it's still is pretty, the ride that good. It's incredible. It's an indoor roller coaster with all the visual effects of virtual reality. It's 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 stupid cool. There's one spot where you're going 
about 40 miles an hour in a swirl. I don't even remember if we were going down or up right now, to be honest with you, but you're going around the moon. Uh, there's like a big moon in the middle of the, like a visual effect. It's really cool. Um, but we're standing in line for that. And there's this, there's this, there's this lady and her husband and her brother. And they're, they're the types, you know, like they're the types, you know, you know, the type, they're the type that they take a picture of Mr. Incredible and they have a five minute conversation with him. Like he's the yeah, real right. Mr. Incredible. Yeah. Come on. Like, you, we know this is a movie. We, yeah. we move on. I got five kids under seven over here trying let, to get a photo with Mr. Incredible. Can we can we release him, please? Right? Let the kid let the kid go touch him. You yeah. Know? And they had their dad with them, and it had like he had a shirt on with like the Disney characters uh, somehow like spelling Did you do out. That, by the way, no, no, you didn't I, have the matching I, shirts. You I, didn't I, have the Mickey head and. and he, the he's, he's lying to us. Jake. I don't play that. <laughs> I, I, I know he's lying to us. I don't play that. I, don't play that. <laughs> I wore my three most comfortable t-shirts. Actually, you, on the last have you day, and your family ever done the matching t-shirts for anything? We did for a picture, like the the, That's the fair. That's when fine. we went. We did it. We went in. We took photos in front of Magic Kingdom, and I shook my shirt. Uh, I'm just. <laughs> if, sure. I will tell you this though, if you found one that was comfortable like really comfortable and I wanted to be in it all day, I'd wear probably just about anything. We would have seen it on the podcast by now. If yeah, 100%, 100%. You would be wearing your Simba t-shirt on if, <laughs> as long as it, it felt good on your skin. I guarantee you. No doubt about it. It's like no that blue hoodie we got for the uh, that QB camp we went to. I wore the MVP hoodie all day long at, uh, all day long at Animal Kingdom. Did, this, this one that you're wearing that Tomahawk says is fire, I think, I think this is your new go-to hoodie. I've been. I, if you tune into Andy Staples and jo and Josh Newberg and everything else, you'll see. This, it, you'll this, see you wearing this it today. That's this a good. It's a, it's a great I mean, hoodie. It is a great hoodie. You've you've been wearing that hat a lot. You've been wearing that hoodie a lot. It, the hoodie is really comfortable. Well, my dog chewed up my my nice master's hat. So, oh. um, and I couldn't even find a good one yesterday for my noggin. But anyway, Wait, let me get back. Masters? Let me get back to the story of yes. talking about the the Disney people. All right. So we're standing there, they're in line, they're talking, they're talking, they're talking, you know, they're rave rap and, you know, they're talking to us, they're talking to everybody around them, all this stuff. I love the energy. I'm all about that. And uh, the dad somehow at, at some point I end up beside the dad and I was like, I was like, have a good time. He goes, uh, I guess <laughs> it's an older gentleman, probably about in his early seventies. He goes, I was like, what you need? What was, you know, what, what are you looking forward to? He goes, I just, I really need a couple of beers and my own space. <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and I just thought to myself, I was like, I bet that man loves his kids and just hates the fact that he's having to do this right now because he is, he was not a Disney adult, but though sure. his kids and uh, his wife's husband were 100% Disney adults. So mm. I don't look to, down on them too bad, but I, I'm with you on this. You know, the type. You know, yeah, the, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. I like I said, it's not for me. That's fine. It's okay. Not everything has to be for me. I find it strange. Yeah, I was kind of like me and Tiki Masala. Yeah, <laughs> sure, sure. I don't I don't mess with it. But uh yeah, so did that. And uh, you know, I don't know if you've heard, but I went to the Masters yesterday. In and, Augusta, uh, Georgia? I did. I did. Wow. Oh my god. Um That's let me let me give you the breakdown. I'm talking about like probably four the beers. Golf, the golf tournament. The golf tournament. Oh the golf wow! Tournament. Okay, right. had about four beers, <laughs> diet coke, bottle of water. Um, Let's and, get into sandwich uh, numbers. Let's get into sandwich numbers. Get into sandwich numbers. I had breakfast sandwich. I had a barbecue sandwich. I had three egg salad sandwiches, one white chocolate pecan cookie, and a peach and a peach ice cream sandwich. Oh boy, that's a good menu for the day. Dude, let me no, tell you, no pimento cheese. No, I don't do the pimento cheese there. It's I, like I've said before. It's it's that. Like, I don't know if you've ever had palmetto pimento cheese, but palmetto oh, pimento have. cheese I is like I finished a tub of it today. It's like good and firm. <laughs> it's like it's like uh it's like coarse shredded yes. cheese. Yes. But the but the pimento cheese at the masters is kind of whipped and it's like a little bit of moosiness to it and it's super soft. And I, I don't like that in a sandwich. Like I just I love like I would eat that I would eat not by itself, I would eat that master's pimento cheese on like a burger in a heartbeat or sure. like a or like a ham sandwich, I totally. But yeah, I couldn't do it. Uh, but my friend who went with me, Alan Little, shout out to him. Uh, he had one of every sandwich except for ham and cheese on rye. Nice. Which is how many sandwiches? 
I think it's like, I want to say six or seven. And he tried every dessert. Like he tried the pecan cluster, the chocolate chip, the white chocolate uh, chip. Um, he that tried never, everything. I, I credit this guy because that never crossed my mind it, when I went, like to try all the food. Because all of it sounded very basic. And most of, so most of what I ate was the pimento cheese and the egg salad. Um, and then I drank a bunch of the beer. Um, but I guess, yeah, you could approach it that way. Dude, eggs, egg salad and beer. Those egg salad sandwiches and beer are like donuts and milk. Yeah, Un- sure. The hot donuts and milk. Unlimited. Like, no. I don't think I could ever. F- yeah, it just. Yeah. I'm like a, yeah. I'll, <laughs> that doesn't sound like a combination that would go together. Well, it didn't for one gentleman in the bathroom. I'll tell you that <laughs> because we were in a we were in a, one of those bigger bathrooms they had, and this dude was in there just fighting for his life. He was trying to he was trying to keep his soul inside his body and keep it from falling out the bottom. And everybody in there could hear it, and you, you know you hear the little comments. Hey, someone needs to check on that guy. Um, <laughs> do we need to call the Do we need to call the paramedics? And one guy, I'm over there washing my hands and one guy walks up and you hear a little tap on the door on the thing. And he goes, Hey buddy, we're real excited out here for you. What did you decide to name it? Oh God. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) I mean, just, oh, just unbelievable. Cool experience though. And I roasted, I like, check this out. Oh yeah. 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 Just, 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 just you're you're a solid, you're a solid medium rare right there. Yeah. No (laughs) doubt about it, buddy. Got, got a little sunburn there. First time I've ever needed sunscreen at the Masters, and boy, did I need it! Because there was a there was one cloud in the sky yesterday, and it was the sun, it was the moon. Yeah, sure, sure. That's the only thing that got between me and the sun pretty much all day. Yeah. Well, good. I'm glad you had fun with it, man. That's it. it is. I, I will say, I think we may have talked about it here. I don't know, but I think it's one of those things. In if you ever get a chance to go, you should go. You got to go because it is. It lives up to the hype, and very few things in the world do. Uh, the Masters absolutely lives up to the hype. And my th- my theory is that it's because there are no cell phones allowed. Yeah, that's it. I'll tell you what, man. Your first two hours are spent. Your first two hours are spent like pocket patting, and being like, "Oh God, where's my phone? Yeah, did sure, I lose sure. my phone? No." Um, but yeah, it's it's. I'll tell you one thing that really helps with that. The first year it was bad. Like I'm, you know, especially for us because we are. We're on our phones all the time. We're we're constantly talking to people on the board. Phantom buzzes. Like yeah. Sure. Just constantly got something going on, a Twitter notification or something. Telling Palmer's mom I'm not going to hit her back. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like. <laughs> <laughs> well, really, that, for me, it's always telling Palmer's mom, no, I haven't talked to him today, but I think he's okay. <laughs> sure, sure. I think he's going to be okay. Uh, no, but so, but last year I accidentally just like took my phone up to the, up to security and they're like, sorry, you can't bring that in. You have to go check it over there. And I went and checked it and I was like, just kind of knowing that, you know, I could jump out and go check it real quick, um, was kind of cool. So I just took it straight to the shack this time and was like, Hey, can I check this real quick? And that worked out. But well, always, and, also, and I always year that resulted in you hurrying your way back to Athens. It did a hundred percent. Yeah, I had to hurry back to Athens and interview Carson Beck and Brock Vandegrift. You want to talk about some stuff in hindsight? I was what a stupid decision that was. <laughs> I should have went back in, had some more beers, had a better time. I was sure. with my dad, uh, but yeah, it was. It's a cool experience, and if you ever get a chance to go, go. And if you just insist on not going, I'll go. Yeah, I'll go. Yeah, I'll, I'll volunteer as tribute. I've never been. Yeah, I'm, if Palmer ever gets tickets, I think I'm going to pay a hitman to sit in the bushes and, and just pick him off as he's going in. <laughs> you got to call. I guarantee there's somebody at Montgomery Bell Academy who has tickets to the Masters, buddy. No, I, I, I know that there are. Yeah, yeah. But so. I'm just I'm just not close enough with those. Pull people. some strings, <laughs> sure, Palmer. Sure. Yeah. I did meet a, I did meet a couple of uh, older ladies that uh, were um, from Nashville, and they were they're go- they were golfing buddies, and they had come in from Nashville, and uh, we got to talking about you know kind of living around in the Nashville area, and she was like, yeah, my husband went to NBA, and uh, uh, and they said that they go eat at Sperry's all the time, so uh, they 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 probably have run into your ilk before, that's for sure. They they probably have. All right, we want to get to these questions from the board, or we want to. Let's what do we do want it. to Let's do? Let's do it. Yeah, tonight we're uh, we open this up to the um, subscribers over at Dogs HQ. 
to uh, ask us anything. Um, you know, we said this is not really a Georgia show. Uh, we'll answer some Georgia stuff if that's what comes across our plate. But I was just curious what people had for us because um, we always do uh, Jake and off at the end of the show. And uh, so there was one which, guy who Which won. now, Roos, would feel like a good time to remind folks that they can get uh, first two months for $1 off of our YouTube promo. That's why we call him Palmer the Promoter. UGA1, uh, code UGA1, <laughs> first two months for $1. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Yeah, come over, hang out with us at Dogs HQ. You can get your questions asked as well. Uh, we'll take some over here in the comments too if you get a couple uh, that pop through. But it's like I said, ask us anything. I opened it up. I said food, philosophy, how to rear a child, uh, hew a <laughs> log. Um, uh, we, we were open to it all. So people came up with some pretty good ones. I do want to save um, the one, Palmer, uh, which was the inverse question. The one, yeah, yeah. The the, the, inverse. the inverse question, I, I would like to save, and I'd like to make that the Jake and Off segment. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, the same thing. Uh, we've got a kind of a mind mill going on here. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, then we will get started here. Uh, this one says, what would Roe shoot at the Masters? Speaking of speaking of your trip to Augusta National, what would you shoot at Augusta National? Did Jake Roe go to the Masters? I, I, I heard that he did. <laughs> I would Rumor say has it. I would say if the putter's hot, 68, 69, sure, somewhere in there, sure. if yeah. the putter's hot, um, I, I, I probably like 110, 115 at best. You know, and like he's I'm, a decent golfer. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm, like, I'm like a, no, nah, I'm not wouldn't say decent golfer, but I'm like a 14 handicap. You know, like I'm, uh, I don't know though, man. You're, that, you're decent. You're decent. When you look at those, when you look at those greens. And you see, like even even looking at them in person, it's different than looking at them on TV. On TV, obviously, they just look flat. You know, you don't really see the undulations or anything. But you see them up close, and you see like a ball hit on the green and stop. And then all of a sudden, you're like, "Wait a minute, that thing's picking up speed. That thing's flying down a little hill. Oh, yeah. huh? I'm, what in the world's going on here?" Like, you so, know, so you think you've got no shot in hell of breaking 100? No, not no, especially not if I've got to play from any sort of boxes that they're playing from. Um, yeah. Um, cause I mean, it's just no possible way. I mean, I remember seeing a, uh, interview with Ray Romano years ago about how, um, they had this thing where in the days after the masters was when CBS was covering it, like some of the celebrities and stuff like that, they would let them on and play the Sunday pins. And Ray Romano was talking about how he was like an eight or a nine handicap or something. And he, he, he had still yet to break a hundred. Do they still do the media lottery? Yeah, they did. Ryan Dennis, our, our yeah. good friend Ryan Dennis, played in it. Um, uh, no, was, did he really? Uh, Ryan got to play? Ryan got to play on Monday wow, after the Masters. Good for Ryan. Um, a couple years ago. Chip Towers has played out there. Uh, uh, Zach Klein has gotten in it too a couple times. Ran into Zach yesterday in the pro shop, actually. Um, but, yeah, they had actually had a chance out there. But I got – I mean, unless the putter's hot, I'm, I'm going to shoot over 70 for sure. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Um, all right, Roos, we will go to you because you're not much of a golfer. Uh, no, I'm not. I like to play golf. Uh, I'm just real shitty at it. Yeah. Roos, we will go to you with this one. Uh, Brian Subs or the field? Uh, I'm going to take Brian Subs. Uh, yeah. I, I, and I, I have to go off the back. I'm teaming with sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> I've never, I've just never had a greater sandwich than that. Oh. Brian Subs, Dublin, Georgia. Like we've said on the podcast before, if you want to reach out, you want to sponsor us, we will gladly accept it. We will trade it for free subs. And it would um, be the dumbest thing you've ever done because we're going to sit here and forgive you free advertising every chance you want anyway because we love you that much. Yeah, absolutely. If you get the chance and you find yourself in the middle Georgia area, grind subs, a must visit. I've never had a better sandwich. I don't know what you want me to say. Did, uh, I, I, can't I wanted to ask you I, – I wanted to ask you this, – this question got me to thinking – because, you know, obviously we went a few times and then you stopped going to Georgia, Florida, and then Johnny Sanders and I went through a couple of times and it was just me and him. Yeah. Did you ever – I know we ordered the Italian sausage and marinara sandwich. Did you ever get a chance to order that one? Yeah, I, I, I think we did get that one. Okay. That God almighty. This pro it's so funny. It's one of those places – that's like it's got its Brian special, right? It's got that kind of like the signature sandwich. Sure. And it's got a lot of other popular things, like it's got a chicken parm and a meatball and all this stuff. But it's some kind of off-brand, weird, 
you know, like, oh, they make that? Like, that's that's not something you see every day. And that Italian sausage, onions, peppers, and marinara is brutally good. Like, I'm yeah. starving right now. Yeah. Everything about the place, fantastic. So, I'm taking Brian's subs against the field. Yeah. Good especially, call. especially, you better believe this, especially in the Southeast. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. We'll talk, speaking of the Southeast, we will go to Roe with this one. Uh, avid barbecue fan over there. What state has the best barbecue? <laughs> and if it's not North Carolina, why are, why am I wrong? Is that yeah, the one? Yeah. That, that is the rest of it. Um, I'm not okay. I feel like North Carolina has got two different types of barbecue. Here's where this man played himself. Okay. Um, you've got, <laughs> uh, I believe you've got Eastern, Eastern North Carolina barbecue, which is kind of, is, is it Western, Western Carolina barbecue? That's kind of, uh, vinegary and then kind of eastern barbecue, a little more mustardy. The mustard, the mustard yeah. sauce. Yeah. Now, it, Carolina based mustard sauce and mustardy barbecue, uh, all in, all in. Love mustard based barbecue sauce. I'm coming around on vinegar based barbecue sauce, like a, a little bit. Like, I'm it's not my favorite. Um, but I mean, if I'm going, you know, Texas style barbecue is the best to me. Uh, because Tomez. Uh, you're a big Tomez guy. Yeah. To, I love Tomez. I love brisket. You know, the funny thing is, I mean, I like it all, but the most underrated piece of barbecue you can have is a perfectly cooked chicken quarter or chicken half. Like that's, you know, cook it where it's not dried out. Uh, I like the Alabama, I like the Alabama white sauce. The, yeah, I, it all the I'm, way a, I'm, a, I'm a sausage guy. Love it too. Yeah. The, the, the Texas, the Texas guys do the sausage. And if I find sausage on a barbecue menu, that's where I'm headed. Also, I'm going to try some Turkey. I'll take sausage from a Texas guy any day. Scott, Scott, Scott Anderson says, how about Memphis? I'll be honest. I've never been to Memphis. Uh, Memphis is pretty good, man. I mean, it really is. One of the cool things about Memphis, they, I, I think this is a Memphis thing because I couldn't get away from it when I covered the Liberty Bowl in, in 2015 and, and Mark Ricks last year. They do the the sausage, cheese, and pickle plates, oh. which are fantastic. Yes, yes. I mean th those those little sausage, cheese, and pickle plates were everywhere. Um, I, I know some people crap on it, but I, my experience with Rendezvous was really good. I thought Ron, Rendezvous served some really solid ribs. I tell you, another place is very underrated is St. Louis. Um, St. Louis uh, shaved duck. We've talked What's about great, it here what, before. Let me ask you this. But let's let's just simplify this question. Where's the greatest barbecue you've ever had? I can give you mine right now. It's Q39 in about Kansas City. Greatest barbecue I've ever had is about 20 feet to my left over Come here. Come on. Get out of here. <laughs> here. Q39. Such an asshole. Q39, Kansas City. <laughs> you couldn't beat it. Um, That's a good question. I don't think... I know there's more world-class barbecue out there that I haven't had. I'll tell you what's right up there, though, and, and this is going to blow some folks' mind. One of the best barbecue things I've ever had is is those burn-ins at, at the Bearded Pig. I Jackson knew you were Florida. going there. Best burn-ins in the state of Florida. <laughs> yeah. Those burn-ins at, at uh, the Bearded Pig are, are pretty special. They're pretty special. Tell people what, about the Bearded Pig. I mean, uh, there's a couple of them. There's one it. There's one in downtown. I, uh, you know, the funny thing is I had no idea it was even existed. Um, in Jacksonville. But, yeah, in Jacksonville, right? There's one in downtown Jacksonville, and I didn't have any idea existed. If you don't know the situation in Jacksonville, um, you know, obviously we can't go paying $500, $600 a night for a hotel, um, but you're going, you're going to pay that if you're going to stay at a decent hotel in downtown Jacksonville for Georgia, Florida. Well, in 2020, with the half capacity and everything, the hotel rooms were like, way down like that they were super cheap and i ended up staying at a downtown hotel you know a lot closer to the stadium than i normally do and i was right across the street from the bearded pig it was uh right around the i mean i the the way i remember is it was the day that the you know they finally named the winner of the 2020 election <laughs> and uh went in there and had it and i was like man this is really good and then i found out they had one on atlantic beach and, you know, that's kind of more where we typically stay out that way, somewhere between Jacksonville, Atlanta Beach, Atlantic Beach every year. And uh, I decided, hey, listen, rather than deal with the worst press box food that I've ever had, let's just hit the Bearded Pig at 11 a.m. when it opens. They'll still have the burn ins because they'll have just be started. And so, yeah, we went and, you know, dialed it up with some burn ins. Uh, 
And that took the guys out there. We've done it two years in a row now. So I've got I got entirely too many burn ins this past year. Most entirely people do. Food, no such thing. No such thing. I think I mean, we I, I think we went ahead and like eighty six them like with one group of people. Yeah, pretty I think much. we had like seven or eight, you know, uh, orders of burn ins, but um, yeah. I will say this though. It's not I mean, I wouldn't say it's the best barbecue I ever had, but I'll be honest with you. I put a lot of love in my barbecue and uh I'll put it up against Average what's, your best, what's your what's your best one? I mean, it's uh, ribs. Um, because yeah, see, I'm, I, a pork, I'm a pork bun guy. I'm, per, I'm pretty meticulous with them. Um, as far as cooking them, I honestly I don't even like eating my own ribs a whole lot. Like I just uh, one or two and I'm good. Um, so there's there's almost like an emotional drainage that happens there and trying to make sure I get these things right. Well, and you smell them all day and you're around them and it's just, yeah. it's, it's almost like you've eaten them already, right? Yeah. But my favorite thing, my favorite thing to eat is is you know pulled pork is, that I cook. Um, every now and then, um, you know, I get a brisket and uh, and and if I nail it, um, it's really 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 good. I cook brisket. Um, I did a bunch of brisket for my sister in law's uh, rehearsal dinner several years back, and uh, uh, she's a she's a doctor. She went. She a bunch of her med school friends were there, and they were just all like, "Oh man, this is this is really good." And I was like, "This is dry." But whatever, <laughs> I I am ashamed. I'm and disgusted well, with myself. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I wish you just flipped the table. <laughs> yeah. It's garbage. The shower rod broke, or it would have been over. <laughs> uh, all right. So while we're talking about cooking for people, right. um, I think y'all have answered this one before. Something along these lines, at least. Yes, um, I have cooked meth before. <laughs> But if you're going to somebody's house to watch football, what foods are you really hoping they have? Let's let's call it two foods. Well, what am I well hoping they have Roos's favorite. Uh, I'm hoping they have a some sort of smoked sausage there. Um, oh, because you can't miss. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm with that. I, I a a a brat, um, uh, you know, something of that nature. Uh, a sausage, uh, always very very welcome. I'm a big, I'm a big, uh, I don't know, man. Like, I, w- I want a tortilla chip adjacent thing. So, a buffalo dip. Um, buffalo yeah. chicken dip is is buffalo chicken dip's great. Probably would, right there. Offer, for me. There's nothing. Listen, the, in my opinion, too, though, there's not much like a good sheet pan nacho. Uh, you know, if you really get that, and like your in, NFL draft nachos. That absolutely, time. brother. That's what I'm talking about. I mean. Yeah. A sheet pan nacho is a very, very strong offering. Uh, and obviously chicken wings, too, which are a little bit more complicated of a thing to execute. But Bro, um, you make some solid chicken wings. Yeah, yeah. I'd smoke them bad boys up. They, uh, yeah. They're they pretty good. Um, went to a, I went to a gathering one time at somebody's house, and I didn't know them. Um, it, was, it was the day Ben he Cleveland. Just walked right in. You and, weren't invited. <laughs> I was invited. It was the day Ben Cleveland and uh, Jacob Easton committed to Georgia. And, Dog died uh, 2015. Yeah. And so uh, we had covered that commitment kind of – I was covering the commitment in the car, and my wife had – one of her childhood friends had a uh, – had was having an engagement party, I think it was. And it was at her house, and her dad had been back, you know, back working on the grill. He had a bunch of smoked sausage. He had some brats. He had a t- some Italian sausage out there. Um, and then I think he was, uh, I think there was kind of like an all day deal and he was going to grill up a bunch of steaks and stuff like that, but we were only going to be there for part of it. And it was one of those days I had a lot going on and I don't even think I'd ever, I don't think I'd eaten anything like all day. And I got in there about two o'clock and nobody was messing with the sausage. Like nobody, nobody, he'd cut it up and they had buns and everything. They had onions, they had relish, they had, uh, uh, had the yellow mustard sitting out, had some Dijon mustard sitting out, dude. I went to town and I'll never forget. I'm sitting there and I'm like, you know, just gnawing on the what, probably about my fifth or sixth dog, sausage dog. And this guy goes, the, the dad comes walking through and he goes, What the hell happened to the sausage? Nobody touched it a minute ago. And now we're down to the bare bones. <laughs> That's kind of your Jeremy Pruitt voice, by the way. That you oh, did. yeah. yeah you a, a sheepish Jake Rowe, just like, yeah, I'm just. Been hanging just, out over here for a little bit. Just kind of, <laughs> you know, just get out of the picture a little bit. But yeah, I'd, I any any kind of good like any, any kind of good like smoked sausage like that. 100%. I do like I, I do I don't eat it very often, but if it's around 
I'm always probably going to get a scoop of some of that rotel dip too. Mm. Yeah, that's not my thing. I, I have a hard time with that. Um, that fake cheese stuff. Um, no, I I, 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 one thing I absolutely abhor, like more than anything in this entire world, is like the nacho cheese sauce you'd get at like a Georgia basketball game or a. Uh, you uh, you are a fool. You are an absolute fool. fool. That is one of the <laughs> finest. Like I had I had some good. nachos at at the Braves game last night and had it out of the uh, a, a big old helmet. You know they they give out the miniature <laughs> helmets. For the for the dipping dots, this one was like salad bowl size. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> this is this is like uh, Andres Galarraga's helmet full of nachos. So. <laughs> yeah, they were solid. Cheap nacho um, cheeses. All right, what you got? What you got for us, Paul? All right, so so we know the answer to this one. Uh, who had the best choice, the best chance of playing college football in the Dogs HQ staff? It's Jeremy Johnson. He played quarterback at Auburn. That's yeah, right. right. No, yeah, no. sure. Absolutely. <laughs> People don't know that about him either. Um, it's uh, amazing that he was able to make the transition. He was a Heisman favorite at one point, preseason Heisman favorite, hopeful. <laughs> I would have I would have to think it's rusty. Just yeah, size, just yeah, yeah I would say so too. Yeah, from just based on frame alone. Um yeah. Rusty's not a giant human or anything like that. I think he's I think Rusty's in the six two range. Um, but definitely more of a college style. Um, and listen. We don't have the photo, I don't think, not unless Palmer can work his oh, magic. Oh, I, I I mean, he had a D1 mustache. <laughs> Rusty had a D1 mustache in, in high school. I, uh, I I will say this. What we do know is that uh, Jake Roos, the last person on the uh, – the, 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 the only one of us that did it. The only one of us that did it. That didn't what? That didn't play high school football. No, no. I did play middle school football. Yeah. You know, just to be clear. Um, but no, I not my I'm not I'm not an athlete. I've known that for a long, long time. I'm gonna find this picture, but I will throw that y'all the next question. Um either of y'all big karaoke guys? Never never done karaoke. Never done, done karaoke. I have done karaoke many times. So so Roos, what's your go-to karaoke song? If it's available, what I like to do is um, Forgot About Dre by Dr. Dre and Eminem. Um, because rapping is a lot different from singing. And it doesn't matter if you can sing, if you can rap. So um, I know all the words to that song, which is impressive. And people like that. Um, so if you can rap, that's a good choice. My go-to karaoke song is uh, probably Time Marches On by Tracy Lawrence. Um <laughs> Uh, I I do a pretty good Tracy Lawrence too. There's a I there's, marches on. There, there's a there's a twang to Tracy Lawrence that that not a lot of guys have. And if you can hit that, like can you paint me a Birmingham. Like, there's <laughs> there, there, there are these there are these like weird little notes that he's hitting that nobody else almost does. And so uh, I lean into Tracy Lawrence's stuff. I've done a few things. None of them I feel as good about though as Time Marches On. I would like to think that if I got to choose um, one, there's a song that I love, and I don't even know if Roos knows this about me. If I hear it, I, it's on, and I'm singing every word to it, is the great song by the band Looking Glass, Brandy, You're a Fine oh, Girl. Oh, You're a Fine Girl. Yes. I love that <laughs> song so much. That's and, a great uh, song. If, I could, if, if it could be one of those situations where I got a little band, I'm like, hey, can we get that in the key of E, please? <laughs> um, <laughs> <you know? laughs> <laughs> just look hey, excuse me can we get that at e, e sharp got a little, little, eh, eh, eh. You, you hear me you, you got me, 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 me. Yeah. You got me yeah. really good hey, <laughs> hey you come in first the drums yeah. may distract me yeah i will say this in most cases where i've ever sung karaoke i have regretted it i have also probably been way too drunk um and so i don't it's it's not something i actively seek out if, like I said, if I can find rap on the list, I will do rap because you don't have to sing to rap. M and mixing so. the topics of, of barbecue and uh, karaoke, I sang, uh, and definitely a little bit too too drunk to do it, uh, but sang karaoke over at uh, Butt Hut in Athens. What did you say? What, uh, I can't remember what I sang. Sponsored you're by Bud Light. You're, 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 you're probably out here singing some like sexy red or whatever the hell the kids are doing these days. I don't know. <laughs> Y'all are in a different All right. Generation. So 
This this is a promo to watch this on YouTube if you're listening to this. We did find the rusty photo. Oh, thank God. Um, had to scroll way back in in the text chain, but uh, I would have recruited that guy. I would have recruited that guy. <laughs> that looks like a grown ass man in high yeah, school. You know he is because he's he's carrying 400 pounds worth of shoulder pads. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a Bill Cower jawline like you've never seen, too. He, I mean, dude, he looks like Bill. He looks older than Bill Cower does right now. <laughs> <laughs> and 80, 83 means what? He he had to play tight end. Yeah, yeah, he played tight end, and that was uh, that's his uh, that's his granddad in his uniform. Yeah, <laughs> sure, sure, that's what it is, hundred yeah. percent. Look at that full head of hair, though, man. Look at that. I mean, like, there ain't. Oh, no. He's this. This is alpha male shit we're seeing. <laughs> I mean, just. just <laughs> this is like a dude in a Camaro. Like, you know, yeah. this is, uh, you know, dazed and confused kind of roll up with uh, sweet emotions playing. Flick a cigarette. Yeah. You know. Sure, sure. sure. This is, of course, the second best Rusty Mansell picture to the. Uh, to the cowboy hat photo. The cowboy hat's a great one. Yeah, the cowboy <laughs> hat was a good one too. Hundred yeah. percent. Um. All right. So we will wrap this up here with a combo of two questions. Um. Somebody asked for some recruiting stories that you haven't told. Um. But also, somebody says, "What's the funniest thing that's ever happened to you, sports journalism related? Um. Could be recruiting, covering the team, preferably a story you haven't told. We already know the time that Roe got reamed by Mark Rick." I'll tell you my funniest story, and I, I did. It's, it's very Roos related. The time that Roos uh, sat in his food. I knew you um, were going to say I, that. That, that, that was the one I had did. too. That was the yeah. one I had also. The time what, my man what, Roos. What sat in, I, I don't think I've heard this. We're at the Georgia. All it was Georgia Auburn 2014. 15. 15. 15. Well, no, it may have been 14. It was Todd Gurley. It was Todd Gurley. Yeah. Yeah, it was that 2014 game where Nick Chubb went crazy. Ty Gurley ran back to open a kickoff. It got called back. We're Roos and I, neither one of us are primary team coverage guys. And we're kind of, they've kind of put us down there on the very end of the second row of the press box. Um, and my man Roos at halftime went and made himself a thing of chips and salsa and, and, you know, had a big plate. I'm talking about a big plate of it and uh, just set it in his seat for whatever reason. I don't even know why. And my man just walked back to his seat and sat right in it. I mean, just uh, crunched it. Me, yeah. m- me, him, and Paul Meharry. Um, and Paul Meharry, I thought, was going to need surgery. Like yeah. he, he thought that was the best thing he'd ever seen in his life. Uh, but it was, it was pretty hilarious. It's so dumb, so stupid. Um, <laughs> uh, a recruiting story. Um, I guess I, I was trying to think of one of those, and um, this is one I've never told before. I don't, I don't even know if I've ever. T- I don't know that I've ever told either one of you that story. Um. But I was flying out. Uh, I had scheduled a trip, and um, I'd built it out to go to see Kendall Milton. And I was seeing Kendall, Noah Sewell. Uh, he played with a kid named Kingsley Sumayata, uh, who was a big uh, offensive tackle. Um, God, there was somebody else I hit on that trip, too. Um, but I was making this kind of like big West Coast stand. And... Um, so, so I went to the, the, uh, I get everything set, you know, I book, I book all my trips, all this stuff. I go to the Delta sky lounge in, um, Atlanta. Do you know this? I think I've heard you tell me. I, I, yeah. think, I think I've heard this too, but yeah. I'll let you continue. Okay. Well, maybe I have told you both. So I go to the Delta sky lounge in Atlanta. I'm waiting on my flight, slamming beers, boom, boom, boom. Just hitting the four twenties, you know, I'm like, ah, about time to get on the plane, walk out. I mean, gate directly across from the Sky Lounge. I walk over, doors closed, nobody's standing around. I'm like, hey, what's what's up? And they're like, yeah, can we help you? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, Jake Roos. And they were like, yeah, we've been calling your name on the intercom. You you have missed the flight. And I was like, you you got to be shitting. And they were like, no, no, you're the, the flight is gone. You have to now figure this out. And so had the uh, flight left, like the plane was completely gone or, uh, no, no, it wasn't was it just doors the, closed. the boarding boarding was over. Right. Yeah. Um, and I had missed it by like maybe 10 minutes, um, something like that. And, um, so anyway, I, uh, I never told 
my my boss at the time that that happened. Um, I just uh, went and paid for a hotel room on my own. Uh, they were able to rebook me onto the next flight out to Salt Lake. I had to sleep in Salt Lake, which I wasn't originally supposed to do. We were able to move everything around and it worked out. But um, that was the one time I missed a flight um was uh the Kendall Milton trip and I've got I've got one that involves uh nobody on this uh, on this show um but I'm going to tell it anyway because it's one of my just my favorite all-time stories back in the day when Mike Griffith first started covering Georgia football I think it was his first summer covering Georgia football Georgia had its first preseason scrimmage and over at Sanford Stadium and back in those days we would go all go to the butts mirror and we would all go into – we had this, like, conference room that we all worked out of. And we would we'd go to the butts mirror, and then you would make your way over to the to the football field. Um, you'd drop your stuff off, make your way over to the football field, go watch 10, 15 minutes before the scrimmage, who's participating, who's not, maybe roll call, whatever. And then you would come back and, you know, work, get out a practice report real quick, and then Kirby would talk after the scrimmage. Well, Mike uh, was at butts mirror. And then I hop in the car. I think Seth Emerson rides over with me. We ride over there, and um, we, uh, we get parked, go watch practice. And then about two or three minutes before the media viewing period is over, I see Mike Griffith just come barreling in, and he is drenched. Like, he is like somebody has just sprayed this man down with a water hose. And I walk over to him, and I say, hey, man, you okay? He goes, Oh, Jesus Christ. I, I, I swear to God, I thought it was closer. I thought it was so much closer. Like, I, I just, I tried to walk here. And then I started looking at the time and I was like, I got to run. And like, he <laughs> he tried to walk from the Butts Mirror building to Sanford Stadium for the scrimmage in like oh, God. 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. Well, and, and of he course, up, the, the side that we go in on is the complete opposite side of the stadium, which makes yes. it even further. <laughs> and I mean, I could just, I mean, this is August. In Athens, I sure. mean, it was probably no less than ninety-five degrees. I'm, I'm, I'm glad he's still with us uh, because <laughs> it was right through the heat of the day too. It was right it was back in that time when Kirby was like, you know, let's let's try and kill them. You know, like let's see if we can murder these kids out here, every single one of them, or at least build some character. And uh, he almost murdered Mike Griffith that day. I mean, he he wants to murder me. Yeah, well, wants to murder Jed May is who he really wants yeah, to murder. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, he he. he it got after me at that that Orange Bowl practice. Oh, do you, yeah, that's right, because you almost hurt somebody. <laughs> yeah, he he said uh, if uh, if one of the players got hurt, he was gonna he was gonna find me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, um, so do we have a good old fashioned Jake off coming? Yeah, the inverse question. I think we do. So who's uh, so? All right, so I'm gonna ask you the inverse of your question or your my question. I don't know. We can do it either way, man. However you want to do I'll it. I'll ask Jake. you the inverse of my question. Jake, I Ruth, think we could probably both answer, but that's fine. Who do you want? Who do you not want to have a single thing in the do thing in the world to do with your funeral? Uh I'm I mean, fu- I'm fully expecting the answer to be Palmer Tom's. Yeah, uh, I, I, that's mine hundred <laughs> percent. Um Honestly, I mean, you and I love him dearly, uh, but probably Noah. Noah yeah. should not get Noah should not get to speak. <laughs> Noah, they, they should not let Noah talk at the funeral. Um, uh, uh, I love the guy, but he knows too much about me. We've spent too much time together. We've done too much crazy shit together. So One story I, would lead into another, and it would be like it would be like sitting Shiva. It, it, sure. would, it would last for days. <laughs> sure, sure, absolutely. So. Uh, yeah, Noah, um, our friend we've talked about here uh, before. Um, I, I probably Noah is is the answer of the person who should not be involved. I would say, if in terms of people uh, watching this podcast who they might know, I would say probably Patrick Garbin. Um, I Patrick Garbin and I have shared some times together as yeah. well that that I, I don't need to advertise to the world. So the old top hat, the old yeah, top yeah, hat, yeah. Patrick Garbin. <laughs> um, uh, I'm going to I'm going to cop out on this one and I'm going to say my mom or my dad. I don't want either one of them to have anything to do with it cuz I don't want them to live long enough to see their son die. Um, oh my god, so, what a depressing answer for yeah. our fun show here. I know, right? Jesus. Just bring it yeah. down a notch. Let's take it down a notch a little bit. Let's do Good a little slow dance. Right Let's here. grind it to a halt. Bring the dust tears in the wind. <laughs> All right. So let me ask you this, Jake, bro. 
I normally ask people the worst hotel room they've ever stayed in. What is the best hotel room you've ever stayed in? Okay, I wouldn't classify it as a hotel room, but I went to Napa a few years ago for a wedding. Uh, my my one of my best friends in the world, Nate Leckahall, got married to his wife Kelly, um, and they live out there. I believe they live in Sacramento now, or or you know somewhere between Sacramento and San Francisco. Um, and uh, they had a wedding over at a Carneros Resort. Um, and I didn't get to be in the wedding, but Nate offered me the opportunity to, he's like, Hey, um, since you're not in the wedding, would you like to come and be a part of all the stuff that the groom's doing? And I'm, I can make sure of that because you and your wife can, you know, well, I'll put you guys up in the, in the bungalow where they're going to, um, where, where, where the groomsmen are going to get ready. And I'm like, absolutely. That'd be great, dude. Incredible. Heated floors. Uh, outdoor shower, indoor shower, a bathtub that took like 30 minutes to fill up. Um, it was it was absolutely perfect. But if you're going to hold me straight to like a, just a strict hotel room, I stayed at the Mandarin in Atlanta one time. I believe it was the Mandarin. In I stayed at the Mandarin somewhere one time. I was not of 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 sober mind most of the time. So I, I'm trying to I mean, be bleeding trips together here. Maybe it was in Chicago, but either way, I stayed at a Mandarin one time and it was also extremely nice. Also, there was a Jacksonville hotel where we ended up getting a suite um, one year for Georgia, Florida, whenever uh, I had just gotten out of college. And uh, while we put about 17 people in this suite, it was very, very nice. Yeah, sure. I like it. Mine was PH Towers. I forget what they call it now. Alara, I think. It was in Vegas. Um, I had just graduated college. I'd been substitute teaching. I was living with my parents and I'd saved up a bunch of money. And my buddies were like, hey, do you want to go to Vegas? And I was like, yeah, sure, let's go. So we booked this hotel room. Um, my buddy Robert booked it uh, as Dr. Trigg, uh, who was his father. <laughs> and um, uh, and so obviously... Um, you know, that, I guess, bought us some favor. The place was really new. Um, they hadn't even really completed building it. There were like two floors uh, at the very top that were uh, un incomplete. So um, we got there. We check in and uh, we're sneaking. You know, I mean, it's like we're exceeding the maximum capacity of the room. Like we, we, we have no right to be in this place. And um, so, you know, they're like, asking about upgrades because you know we read online that's what you do you know we're 22 and 23 years old like yeah ask for upgrades okay sure let's see so we they were like we can't upgrade you because you are as high in the building as we've got right now so we, we take the elevator up we're walking down the hall and we're like trying to find the room number and what dawns on us as we're walking down is that there's a double door at the end of the hallway and that's the room oh wow and That's we were like, and we, and we were like, we were like, holy shit, you got to be kidding us. We walk in, man, sectional couch, giant, giant windows overlooking the strip. We're hanging out over the strip, uh, drop down screens in the place, uh, full kitchenette with the dishwasher. I mean, like just an, an absolutely insane room, man. And uh, to give it to people that young very very stupid and our dishwasher flooded so they uh i think they comped us a night and they uh gave us some free pizza so it all worked out re really really well yeah comped a night free pizza <laughs> just because man tell you what that would have been a good trip to be a part of uh never yeah. been a part of one of those before yeah uh we have not figured out what bark after dark is going to look like next monday that'll be coming up here soon uh but some guests that are perspectives um mark weiser uh, Chuck Oliver, uh, maybe some Steve Wiltfong action on here soon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe some Chip Towers here down the road, and uh, you know, and, and a chance to talk to Chip and and goof off with him a little bit. Let some folks see the side of Chip that doesn't always write for the AJC and 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 is not absolutely not obsessed with reporting bad news on Georgia. My <laughs> golfing buddy, I love the guy, and and I think a lot of folks are wrong about him, and I hope he gets a chance to come on here and show everybody that. Yeah because I love them. But uh, for this episode of Bark After Dark, we've taken up enough of your time and we've maybe even ruined your life. And I'm sorry for that. Y'all take care. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs>